Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 29. This video we're going to be taking a look at working with our engine failsafe protection features. Our engine failsafe protection is in place to save our engine. Things like our rev limiter, our boost cut, a lean cut or EGT protection need to be in place so that when we get into a dangerous condition, it's going to be shutting down our engine. Whether it's going to be shutting off the spark or shutting off our fuel, we want to make sure that we do not have combustion and the engine is not able to run. I'm going to be walking you through how to integrate these basic failsafe protections we find in our M-Tune software so you can make sure your engine is not damaged, whether you're going to be calibrating and tuning or in racing conditions. We have a lot to cover. Let's jump into our videos so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our basic failsafe protection features built into our M-Tune software. These are things that Max has configured for us already to make sure we don't damage our engine. We have more advanced failsafe protection that we can enable and work with. We're going to have a separate video coming up in the training course on that. But for right now, let's focus on these basic failsafe protection features. First thing we need to do is jump into our navigation pane here on the left side. We're going to go under start here and move down under limits. Under limits here, we'll find that we have a rev limiter, a boost cut, a lean power cut, an EGT power cut. We also have warnings and advanced warning outputs. We'll talk about all of this within this training tutorial. We also find down below here general purpose limiters and a user cut tables. This is going to be part of our advanced failsafe protection strategies. I'm not going to cover that in this video. We're going to have a separate video taking a look at this so we can be very in depth when we're working with this type of functionality. So let's move in here. Let's jump into our rev limit. Let's start to dig into programming our main rev limiter. So the main rev limiter is where we have the uh, limit or the red line for the engine. So we don't want the engine to go beyond that actual RPM point. Now this will be different for every engine. You'll find if you have a stock engine, you most likely don't want to rev it any higher than the stock limiter that's in place already from the OEM manufacturer. If you've built the engine, you've added in, let's say, uh, aftermarket valve train, uh, strengthened pistons and rods, and the engine is built to sustain and handle higher horsepower and higher engine speeds, then we can certainly rev it higher based on wherever we're making our peak power at. So for peak power, let's say it's at 9,000, we'd most likely want to rev it about to 9,500. We usually want to go about 500 RPMs higher than our peak power output. So we have good shift recovery and that the engine stays within its power band. That's a general rule of thumb across any kind of engine. So within our RPM programming values in here, let's take a look at how we can integrate this. Now, first thing we'll find up at the top here, we have RPM limiter, rev limiter. We see rev limiter RPM source and rev limit RPM. Now, we find here in the first area here, source, we have some options. We have a single value, two values, switched, or table. Let's talk about our single value first. So the single value is going to be what we have right here, RPM limiter. This is going to be where we want the max RPM to go to when we're going into defining the limiter for the engine we're working with. So if I have an engine that revs to, let's say, 8,000 stock, I would most likely want to place this at 8,000 if the engine is stock. If I've added aftermarket internals and I know my peak power is happening at, let's say, 9,000, and I know that my engine can easily handle that internally, strength-wise, then I could probably go here and say 9,500 for my peak that I'd want to rev it to. This, again, will depending on the engine that you're working with. Now, we do have some other options here as far as our limiter goes. If we go here, we have a two table switched activated. Now in this particular case here, we need to go and actually set up a switch for this specific purpose of going in and bypassing one limiter over the other. So if we actually go into our inputs and we go down to the digital inputs, we can actually go in here and set the function as a switch or a limiter switch. If we go down towards the bottom here, we're going to find here that we should have, looking down our list here, that we should have an activation mode right here. So RPM limit, use secondary limit RPM right here. That would be defining our switch. We'd have to go in and set our it details up for the switch we're working with. We typically want to have just a toggle switch, most likely for this particular function, so we could turn it on or off. In this case, we'd have to define what the activation level is going to be, if it's going to be a low, ground, or high, 12 volt, and then we have to go and say we have a pull-up resistor on or off. So if we have a ground or low input, we need to have the pull-up resistor enabled. If we have a 12 volt input high, we would need to turn off the pull-up resistor to be able to activate it when it's turning on and off. So we'd have to define this switch here, which will allow us to go in here and utilize two different RPM cut points or rev limiters for the engine. So we could have our normal RPM at 9,500, let's say, and then a secondary limiter at, let's say, 5,000 here. 
again, switch activated. So the switch actually has to be activated in order to enable the actual cut at 5,000. This would be useful if you wanted to go in um, let's say you have an, uh, your vehicle would be parked somewhere where it could get stolen or if you're taken to a valet, you want to make sure that you're not allowing somebody who either is stealing the car or moving the car in valet to be able to rev it over a certain engine speed. You might want to place this at 3,500. That should be sufficient enough engine speed for a valet to move it through a parking lot to be able to get your car back or retrieve it. Or if you're parking it somewhere, if a thief is going to try to steal your car, they're going to need to go higher than 3,500 more than likely. So you could put a value in here that would make sense that would either disable it for a safety feature so you could actually uh, not allow the vehicle to run, or you could go in and just have that, again, have a lower engine RPM here for valet mode. Uh, we do also have down here secondary limiter disables TC and power management, so the, uh, the traction control and then kind of power management going on. Right now it's set to no, and if we say, thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.